you mentioned you'd had the pleasure to meet Narinda Kapani, who was the father of fiber optics. What was it like to meet him? And did you get the chance to see his collection? Yeah, meeting him was a very interesting. When I first met him, I was very nervous. <laughs> um, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, he was in his late, I mean, mid 80s when I first met him. Um, and I was, I didn't know what to expect. I showed up to his office and they said, okay, let's hang out here. He'll call you up in a few minutes and okay. And so I go up to his office and, um, the first thing he says to me, oh, okay, you're Sunmit. And I was like, yeah, I'm Sunmit thing. I'm from Maryland. And he goes, so you're a collector. And I was like, of sorts. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I collect a few things. He goes, and straight to business, he goes, okay, show me what you have. <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> and so luckily I had a folder on my phone of, of pictures of things that I had just, you know, started putting aside a sick art and just everything that was specifically sick related. And, uh, you know, he flipped through all the pictures and I think that's when he felt comfortable. He's like, well, okay, have a seat. So let me tell you, and, and that's, you know, then we talked for about an hour and a half. You passed two. the test, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt like I passed the test. He told <laughs> me the story about how he got the George Richmond painting of modern agenda and, you know, his background and all of this. And, and then we met a few times after that as well. I think I feel like I met him the year before he passed away as well. It was one of part of the Hazur art and the sick art exhibit that happened in California. A lot of the artwork was from his collection. Just recently, actually, I think on my last trip or the trip before that to London, I found something really cool that was his by some random Gora who just had it. Uh, Dr. Kapani started a company in, I think, 1968 when he first started figuring out what's going on with fiber optics. So he got this box with a bunch of like glass slides and it said on the right side from the desk of K uh, NS Kapani and what's in it. And he mailed these out to a lot of different, I think, universities or companies as samples. And one of these popped up for sale and I was able to buy it. I'll make a post about it. I just had yeah, yeah. <laughs> to photograph it. I just figured it's, it's a part of uh, history internet history yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah this was the beginnings where he was sending out these samples and trying to convince companies to invest in him and and uh, learn about what he had discovered so this is a really really cool find uh that uh that i just picked up very recently this is just my own curiosity rather than for the sake of the podcast but like what's happened to his collection i'm assuming it's just stayed within his family or something or has it been entrusted to a museum so uh, two museums. So the first was uh, Asian art in San Francisco being close to him. He was always donating stuff there. And they've made a permanent gallery uh, in his his and his wife's name where they always rotate. I think he donated about four or 500 objects there. And so they're constantly rotating uh, every six months. That, they've got the turban helmet there. They've got the flag, a whole bunch of gentlemen. Is this the things. place where they've also got the ring of Maharaj yep. mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that on yeah. the internet a few times. Yeah. And so the second museum uh, that he didn't get to see, this was after he passed, was in Montreal, where he donated a, a good amount of uh, his works. And then the third is with the trust or the family or a foundation, I guess. Uh, it's been inventoried, cataloged, and is available for future exhibitions and museums to acquire, uh, to loan from. How big do you reckon his collection was altogether? Because you said he's donated like four, five hundred. Like we're big. talking thousands of items then. Big. I mean, he was. He started collecting when, you know, the big collectors today weren't even born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the right. original collector, I guess, isn't it? He's the OG collector, <laughs> uh, and he's he he was buying. I mean, he he didn't know a lot about arms and armor. What I figured after meeting him and speaking to him, but he once he was in the buying circle, things were coming to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so, he was buying from Bonhams uh, when Bonhams would just sell things before the auction to people. So his stories are just amazing of how he's acquired various things. We have back to the, the real answer of how I actually felt in, when I first met him. I remember telling him, hey, Dr. Kapani, you're like, you know, 90 something years old. You've got a hard drive here of 
valuable information that a young collector slash dealer like me could greatly benefit from. We'd kill for that info, man. Right? Literally, yeah. And I said, so what do I have to do to have access to this hard this drive? Hard drive? <laughs> and he just laughed it off and there was no answer. And, <laughs> and, and I think that's my, that's literally my uh, biggest issue with uh, a, a lot of people in the sick community, whether it be in the business world or in the antique world or even in academia, it is the gatekeeping is very serious. Um, the whole quote about teach a man to fish doesn't seem to exist <laughs> you know that that was my one one thing that i was like oh, i wish uh i could have trained under you and heard more stories about who the dealers were and you know where you got things from or what's a good way to build something you, you can always learn more that's my so uh i'm in no way shape or form an expert i'm still looking to learn more and unfortunately you hit like a plateau where there's not enough resources for you to learn from you're just kind of messing up and figuring things out.